Hi, my name is Sean Olson. Today's lesson is going to be about using the Slate Material Editor to generate a uh, little texture atlas that we can use for a model, showing you some techniques that you may not know about. First, I'm going to open up the Material Editor, which I have in my other screen I'm going to bring over here. And we're going to create uh, a wood plank. We're going to we'll create some wood, uh, and we're going to just use the standard procedural textures that are in Max. In this case, I'm going to use the classic wood texture. Now in 3ds Max 2019 and later there's another one called Advanced Wood and you may not even see wood in the this specific texture map in 2019, but we're going to use this one for this video. Mainly because this texture map is a lot simpler and I want to just show you some simple controls and simple methods here. So the first thing we're going to discuss here is that many textures in Max have this rollout called coordinates over here. So I have the wood texture uh, selected and we can uh, move our texture around and change its orientation in 3D space. And this texture is being projected onto the object in the objects, in the objects coordinates, the objects XYZ. So for this first piece, I want to show rings. So part this is the part of the texture is going to be the rings of the wood. So I'm going to change the angles here. And I just happen to know that the angles in use here are going to be 90 and 90. And now you can see we have the rings here. And I want to set create two sets of rings that are going to be used on the ends of my planks of wood. So I'm going to have to offset these. And I'm going to put the center of this ring up here. And I believe that the numbers I want are 150 and 150. It might actually be negative. I'm sorry, it's negative 150 and negative 150. So that puts it up here. Great. I also want to have another one that's down here. And I'll explain why we're going to do that in a minute. But first, I'm going to put this into a color correction uh, into a color correction node. And the reason I want this is because I want to keep the same colors uh, among different things, but I want the ends to be uh, lighter. So in this case, I'm just going to shift the saturation down just a little bit and the brightness down a little bit. Oh, the brightness up some. And maybe bring the saturation down just a little bit more. And you can see it's brighter. I could have gone in here and just changed these colors. But I'm going to use the same colors among all of them and just have the ends lighten up with this control. And then I want to pipe this into a composite map. So I'm going to general and do a composite map. Composite map is very similar. It's, it's just like a layered image, just like if you were working in Photoshop or PhotoPaint. So now that I have this, I'm going to take this and shift drag it down here after selecting both of those and this time I'm going to change this one to be offset down uh, not quite as far or actually we'll go up to maybe this one will be 50 maybe so now it's down here in this corner and I want this to be the next layer of my composite map. So I'm going to put it in layer 2. Now notice when I do that, we're only seeing this, this bottom one. And in my end texture, I want to be able to like place different the, both the top and the bottom. So I'm going to have to create a mask. But before I do that, notice that both of these textures are identical. And that's not what we want. If I have this being identical to this, then really adding two different uh, Two different versions of it in here is pointless because they're, they are identical. So I'm going to go back into my map for the wood on this one. And with 3D procedural textures, one of the uh, simple techniques you can do uh, to get variations is to offset in the Z axis. So I have the general, I have this location here in the corner, so I can't use change this X and Y. But if I change it in the Z, notice that the texture starts to change. Oops, my mouse scrolled in and out there. Do that again. I'm going to change the Z. So it's basically like we're taking a different section, a slice of a different section of the wood 
in a different place than the others. So now it is different. Now the top and bottom do not match. Next thing I want to do here is create a mask that separates these two so it will show both of these. So one way we can do that is we're going to create a gradient ramp. I'm going to double click this. I want the interpolation of these to be solid. So I'm going to go from black to white. Make this one white. So we have a mask here. And this one has to be rotated. So the top and bottom. So let's go to 90 degrees here on W. And we're going to set this as the mask on layer 2. So now you see that we have both of these textures. Uh, appearing on here, the top and bottom, and being split by this mask. Now we want to create um, another layer. So let's add another layer here. I'm going to take our original wood and bring it down here. And this time I'm going to get rid of our uh, angles here and get rid of the X rotation. I'm going to still keep Y because I want to use it on this left side of the texture and I want the, the wood to go, the bands to go up and down. So this time I'm going to put this one into layer 3 and now again because I have no mask here um, it's showing just the top layer. So I'm going to shift drag my mask that I made here earlier. I'm going to rotate, get rid of the rotation on this one and change this as the mask for that. And I have the rotation is incorrect or the colors are incorrect here. So I'm actually going to change the rotation on this to be 180. If I do that, it'll flip the other way around. I'm going to show you an alternative. If I didn't want to do any flipping, I can put this back to zero. And another option is to go down here to the Output tab and actually just click this Invert, and it will invert the output of this texture. So those are two ways to accomplish the exact same thing. Now that we have this composite all set up the way we want here, I can render this to a bitmap. So to do that, I can right-click and hit Render Map. And for this, I'm going to choose 512 by 512, and I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it to tests, and as you can see, I'd already had a wood here. I'm just going to save over this file and save it as wood half TGA. And I do not need an alpha for this one. I didn't have any, so. And I'm just going to hit render and render over it, and that's a visual glitch in the render output, but if you zoom in and out, it'll be back. So now here's our bitmap. So we're going to bring that bitmap into 3ds Max. I'm going to create a bitmap node here, and I'm going to load up this file that we just created because I want to show you some other tricks that deal with bitmaps and some features that are have been recently added to 3ds or to Wallworm for exporting into the game engine. I'm going to take this bitmap and I'm going to put it into the uh, diffuse of a standard ma material here. And I'm going to say that I want this bitmap to be displayed in the viewport. And now I'm going to just create a box primitive. This is going to represent a wood plank. And I'm going to apply this material to it. So the one thing we notice here is that the, the texture is appearing across the whole thing in a way that we don't want. Because we want the ends to each have one of these circles and the sides to use this uh, banded part of the wood. So we're going to add an unwrap modifier to this. But I'm going to use a slightly different technique um, to show you a, a function in the material editor. So I'm going to add an unwrap UVW modifier to this. And I'm going to select the four faces around the sides. And open the UV editor. And I'm going to go to mapping and do unfold mapping. Normally this would probably be how you'd want to keep it. But the, for the technique I'm going to show you, instead I'm going to uh, do something else. So I want to rescale these guys. And... I want to rescale those so they fit the entire UV space. So let me go in here and 
make sure that it's right there at the end. That's good enough. And notice, again, I didn't touch the tops. I only touched uh, the sides of this. You go down here, you're going to see that this wraps around in this method. So it's showing half of it on two of the faces and the other half on the other two. I'm going to right click and convert this to an editable poly. And then we're going to open up our material editor again. So we're actually going to copy this material. And I'm going to give this material a name here. Test slash wood. That's going to be the name of our material. I'm going to keep the same material on all of these. Give that name like that. And the reason I'm doing this is a is a wall worm uh, thing for the exporter. Um, so this is the the output path our exported file will go to. I'm going to select this bitmap here, and you'll notice here in this bitmap parameters, there's a button here that says Apply and View Image. So for the the bulk of this, I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to crop. So I can drag this over here if I want to, along here. But actually I'm going to just type in 50 because I know it's exactly half. And now it's only using that half. And because the whole object is using one material, the bottom is that, you know, deselect this here. And notice if we fly around our object here now, it's only got these bendings around it. But the tops are all wrong. So we're going to use the same technique. First we're going to put this into a multi-material. So we go to create a multi-sub-object material and put this in slot 1. I'm going to shift drag this down here and immediately I'm going to paste in the name that I had already assigned to this and because it doesn't keep when you shift drag. And for this one I'm going to put it in slot 2. It's the same named material but I want to use a different transformation for and crop a different section here. So I'm going to go and hit view image here. And for this one, I want it to be all the way to the end, but we just want to use the top half. And so we're going to type in 0.5 here. So it's just the top texture in material 2. And we're going to do the same thing again. Shift drag this down. And Again, I'm going to name it the same as the ones above, just so that uh, the exporter knows that it's a representation of the same exact material. You double click this one's bitmap and go to view image, and this time move it down to the bottom. And this will be ID 3. So now we have three uh, materials in this that are actually the different views of the same material once it goes into the game. So now I'm going to select this top part and go to our material ID section and set this to 2. Set ID 2. And it's not appearing here and the reason for that is I haven't assigned the multi-material. We still have the standard material applied to this. So let's open back up our editor and assign the multi-material to this. And now you'll see that the top is using it. Now we have a problem here that uh, they're not being displayed in the viewport so we're gonna have to go in here and tell all of these different ones to display and because these were different IDs here we are have to assign these to material ID 1 again because we're using a multi-material and let's go down to the bottom and make sure this is set ID 3. So the bottom is a different one than the top. So now we have a single bitmap that has different sections on it and if we open up the bitmap editor we can see that uh, we, we can place the different parts around basically by the uh, bitmap editor. And sometimes this is a little bit easier than having to go in and adjust the UVs. And finally, just to show you how it works for the game, um, I'm going to call this wood plank. And 
I'm going to open up all our model tools here and pick this model and we're going to send this to test Oops. send this to a folder called test and the materials will go to test and we'll just export first we'll export our textures and these are all the same material so I don't need to export it multiple times and hit export and there's our material being exported to and now if we hit export model in QC and we do that and if we open up our model viewer and we save this to um, test and wood plank and here's our, our model. Now the features that I showed you in the material editor those are standard max functions with um, different transformations um, and uh, they can be used in general with all kinds of projects. The function to export this into the game engine, it works with the latest versions of Wallworm. Uh, if, if you want to use this technique by using the crop function of a bitmap inside the material editor, you will have to update your version of Wallworm to the latest versions because support for this is uh, fairly new. As far as uh, other exporters and game engines, that's uh, dependent on uh, the whether or not the exporters support that feature. But with Wallworm, both the VMF and the model exporter will support it. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can always find out more about me at my website, seanolson.net. And you can always get the latest version of all the Wallworm tools at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.